Hey, you're here. There is nowhere else you should be. You're here because you belong, because there's space for your creative soul. There's space for you in the world, and there's space for you to grow. And you're here. Perhaps we're meant to grow together. Thank you for being here. I think we all want to be good at what we do, at what we love doing. Most of us don't start out being good at it, however. First, we have to learn how to do it. Then, we spend our entire lives improving the craft. If you're pursuing a passion, you most likely have a standard you'd like to reach. Having standards is good and natural, it's what drives evolution. But it means you're not satisfied with yourself, not entirely. This dissatisfaction, together with the fear of never achieving that standard you look up to, is self-doubt. My history with self-doubt. Should I be there? As a child, I was very fortunate to have my creative endeavors and interests be supported and cheered on by my family and educators. At that time, creating was something I did purely for entertainment and, without judgement from the outside world, I didn't even care if what I was creating was good or not. I started creating because I was curious and I kept creating because I loved it. As years went by, however, my passion for writing in specific became an ambition. At nine years old, I realized that writing could be more than just a hobby. By 11, I had made my decision. I was going to become a published author. As soon as I started telling the adults this was my dream, however, I got frowns and head shakes and warnings because it doesn't make money, it's not a stable job, and not everyone can be a writer. Unknowingly, this became my negative beliefs. But I was too young to really worry about them, and it wasn't until a few years later that self-doubt started really creeping in. I still remember the moment that made me falter for the first time. What does she want to be when she grows up? Oh, she's going to be a doctor. After years of me telling one of the most important persons in my life that I wanted to be a writer, that I couldn't stand the sight of blood, that I wasn't interested in medicine despite my grades, I was shocked to realize that this person didn't acknowledge my dream. This moment broke something in me, and in us. After this, I changed my answer to the dreaded question. What do you want to be when you grow up? Well, I have two options. First, to make money. I'd like to be a translator, an interpreter, an editor. Every time was a different answer because no, I wouldn't like to become any of those but they were all related to my major in modern languages, so they were sensible enough. Then, on the side, I'd like to be a writer. And this side note was always my real answer, the one that never changed. One thing I would like to 
what audience you would like to write for. And I will tell you right away, my audience is the best audience in the world. I still feel like being a writer is a side note in my life. It's something I'm constantly having to make time for, to make space for. Because it's just not what society expects of me. It's not what pays the bills. And those things are the ones that occupy my whole days. Hello. This mindset is something I've been trying to change for a while now. I want to feel like a writer and I want to be able to say that I am one without worrying about the questions that follow. I'm a writer. I'm a writer. I'm a writer. Self-doubt. Currently, I live with it every day. It's my constant companion from the moment I wake up to the moment I go to sleep. There was a time when I allowed it to stop me from starting things, from keeping up with and finishing them. Not anymore. I've come to realize that every single artist I look up to has expressed this fear. Yes, because self-doubt is rooted in fear. So I know it's not something I can run away from at this point. And I don't worry too much about it. Well, what do I do then? Here's the advice I've been listening to for ages, but which only recently clicked for me. Focus on what you can control. Whatever fear is plaguing you, ask yourself, what can I do about it? What can I do right now? Fear. What if I'm not good enough? Focus on what you can control. You can keep creating. Practice is the best teacher. Give yourself permission to be bad. You can try your best. Pour your heart and soul into everything you create. Create for yourself. Fear. What if I'm going down the wrong path? Focus on what you can control. Check where you're heading. Give yourself permission to take as long as you need. All of us have our unique starting points, obstacles and advantages, so don't compare your past to anyone else's. If you can see the path in front of you clearly, you're on someone else's. Fear. What if this isn't for me? Focus on what you can control. Turn the question around. Are you for it? Behave like the successful version of yourself. Give yourself permission to do it your way. So, that's it. That's the advice. Every time you doubt yourself, focus on what you can control. Take action, no matter how small. This is you acknowledging your self-doubt and using it for introspection and continued improvement. This is you taking advantage of it. Allow yourself to question. Allow yourself to try. Allow yourself to be creative. And remember, you're not alone.